I have two knives I'm going to share with you today. First is the Beaver Craft Dune and the other the Beaver Craft Glacier. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple things. First, I'd like to thank Beavercraft for sending out the dune and the glacier so that I could share them with you. Now, the backstory is these would be the second and third knives that I have reviewed from Beavercraft. I think the one I reviewed previously was the BSH-2. I'll correct that on the screen if I'm not right about that and put a link to the video at the end of this video if you're interested. But to be honest, I really didn't like that knife and I gave it a pretty poor review. There were a few features about it that made it okay, but overall it was just not a knife that I could warm up to. So when I submitted my review to Beavercraft, uh, they actually liked it or at least they liked it enough that they offered me these two knives. Based on that first experience, I was a little hesitant to agree, but once I received the knives, I did ask for them. I did, or I should say, I did agree to take them. Once I received the knives, I revised my opinion immediately. These are almost completely different from that first one. The fit, the finish, the quality is altogether different. The design is altogether different. Yes, it has the same materials, which we'll get to in a moment, but after that, they're just night and day in terms of the design and the quality of the knives. All right, so the next thing I want to say is I have been trying to make this video almost all winter. Here it is early spring and I'm finally getting an opportunity to make this video um, for a number of reasons. Mostly I didn't have access to any wood that I could use for splitting up, batoning and feather sticking and that type of thing because of the heavy snow. Well, now I do. Now I just had to find some and I have, I think I have anyway. We'll see when I go to baton it how good it is. So it's been a long time coming. I guess what I'm saying is I've had these knives for a number of months and I have been using them. So I do have a good amount of experience with them and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on them. So what we'll do is we'll just bring the camera in a little closer. I'll focus in on the knives. I'll give you the specifications for each of them very briefly because of course they will all be listed in the video description below. Then we'll get to doing some demonstrations with it. All right, let's get started. All right, let's start with the knife in the sheath just so you can see the quality. And this is the first big difference between this knife and the first one I reviewed, which by the way, I was incorrect. It was the Beavercraft BSH-3 that I had reviewed that I didn't like. So again, this is the Beavercraft BSH-1, the Dune, the bigger of the two knives that I'm gonna show you. And the quality of the leather is First off, what makes it all together different? So let me just take the knife out of the sheath and lay it down for one second, just so you can get a, an idea of the quality of the leather. I mean, this is pretty much worth the cost of the knife all by itself. If you needed a spare sheath for another knife, then this wouldn't be a bad one to have. Um, dangler, now that may be the only thing is that the the belt loop and the dangler are a little thin on you know on here but it hasn't caused me a problem I you know I do like would I would like to see it a little bit thicker at least this portion here but to be honest it hasn't caused me a problem and uh, I've been like I said I've been wearing it most of the winter you can see how dirty it has got we'll bring the knife back in just so you can see how it fits in the sheath fits in nice and deep and secure and I'm not going to shake it because I probably could if I shook it hard enough and get it to come out so let's put this sheath aside and we'll start in on the knife and I do have some specifications for you but I am only going to give them to you in Imperial right now and then I will put list them in Imperial and in metric in the video description so the overall length of this knife 10.76 inches that's be tipped to pommel of course blade length 4.92 inches so just under five inches blade height so from edge to spine 1.18 inches the blade thickness 0.12 of an inch or just under one eighth of an inch thickness the steel very much like all of the knives from Beavercraft and actually the other knives made in Ukraine as well 1066 high carbon steel which is hardened to 57 to 59 on the Rockwell scale the handles are made of walnut very simple but very functional just the same and you can see they are affixed with allen screws here or allen bolts I guess is what they would be on the edge here so overall design let's just go over that for a moment then I'll bring in and do the other knife because really these two knives have to be shown together because of their similarities and their minor differences so it again it is a full Scandi now it does have a polished secondary 
but that's really all it is. I think it just came from the polishing. It's not like there is a secondary bevel at the edge. So it's just enough to take the fragility or the, you know, the edge, the chance of chipping off of the edge of the knife and uh, keep it nice and strong at the same time. So it, for the, a blade this thin, it's exactly the type of grind you want. It has a nice belly coming up to a slight drop point. It actually wouldn't make a bad well, a hunting knife, I know that hunting knives and food prep knives are better off if they're full flat grind, but because of the steel being as thin as it is, I think this, well, I know it does, it still functions quite well for that. Quite strong at the tip. Yeah, quite nice. Now, fit and finish as we work our way down. Um, I'll say right at this moment, there's a slight misalignment right here where the walnut and the blade stock meet, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, and it's just out of slight alignment at the bottom as well but other than that it is spot on it does have a lanyard hole of course it's not a lanyard tube it's just a straight drilled hole that I put a little piece of paracord in all right let me bring the other knife in and then the comments I'll make after that will be in common for both of the knives all right the other knife is the BSH2 Glacier. It is a bit smaller, so let's go through those specifications. So to start with, I have my cheat sheet here. I'm just trying to rest it on my knee at the same time. Uh, the overall length for this knife is 9.45 inches. It is a blade length of 4.13 inches. It has a blade height from edge to spine of 1.02 inches. The same stock thickness of 0.12 inch, just under 1 8th, same steel. 1066 Heim carbon, same walnut, and I missed showing you the sheath, so let me show you that now. So it is the same basic design, just a little bit smaller, of course, the same good high quality leather. The knife fits in the sheath nice and deep, and you can see it's not falling out. Again, I'm not going to shake it. Same dangler or belt loop system on the back. Yeah, it, you know, see, there's a lot of things uh, the same about these two knives. Now, the one thing I suppose that's a little different is you can see here, the knife is actually dropped below the back of the handle area here. Just a slight difference. And it kind of gives it the impression that it's a, uh, a, a hidden tang. Of course it's not, it is a full broad tang, but something Mora like in nature in that it drops down just a little bit right here. Other than that, small clip point. Again, I think that's a tribute to the Mora knives and full Scandi with just that micro secondary bevel from, I think, polishing at the factory. And you can see there's quite a good polish on this knife as well. Now, the same type of thing happened here at the handles. You can see my fingernail will catch the back of the spine, or not the spine so much as the back of the handle and the walnut. And uh, other than that, of course, the same Allen screws, the same lanyard hole, same little piece of paracord. Fancy that. And just in case I missed it, you can see the Beavercraft logo on there. So what is the deal? I've mentioned this twice. Let me bring the other knife back in. What is the deal with the handles. Well, here's what I found when I first got the knives and I first took them out into the woods. Let me lay one down. I can't have two of them in the knife in my hands at the same time. When I first took them out of the, into the woods and started using them is that I found the handles on these shifted. Not a lot, just a little bit. And that, that made them come just off of the back here a little bit. So when I got them home, I found I actually could use an Allen wrench to tighten them up. So what I guess is taking place is that they were not as tight as they probably reasonably could be when they left the factory. That or the wood has shrunk and dried just a little bit more after it left the factory. So it just got a little looser because they're not glued on. I have had these off. They're not glued on. They're fixed on mechanically and that's all. So here's the good news. It was so easy to fix. You just need the right size Allen wrench two if you want to get get at it from either side but you can do it with one and loosen it off until you can maneuver the handles back into place tighten it down and you're good to go it's what you can expect for a $39 knife $39 Canadian that is so that's not a bad thing at all and if you really don't like these handles replace them they're pretty easy to replace. I have no reason to replace them. I like them just the way they are. They fit and finish on them is just what you would expect for a, a knife that's under $40. 
yeah, overall pretty nice. Now, um, what I think I'll do is just talk about the handle design as well on these two knives. So back to the, the Dune, the larger of the two knives, the BSH-1. You can see how it is just a very simple handle design that widens towards the pommel. And that really does lock my grip in very nicely. Now, it's not a, this one is actually quite a large handle on, on the Dune itself. And it locks my handle in, or my hand in on the handle, and there's no, really no chance of my hand either slipping forward or the knife coming out of my hand any other way. Well, the same can be said for the other knife, except it's just a slight difference. Instead of that angle at the pommel, it's rounded right here. I'll make a comment on that in a minute. It is a smaller knife, but at the same time, it still fits my hand. And I've mentioned many times that I do have XL hands. So for this to fit my hand and feel comfortable there, is uh, quite an achievement. I think this will fit a lot of people's hands just nicely. All right, full disclosure, I find this more comfortable than the other one. Let's just see if I can bring the two of them into the picture at the same time. I'll be able to show this, I think, when I go to demonstrate their use, but the pommel on the larger knife right here, uh, it's not uncomfortable, but it's noticeable when I hold the knife in reverse grip. So you can see, well, you probably can't see, but I will show you when I get this in my hand to do some chest lever cuts, but the pommel is actually pushing into the meat of my hand there, and over time it started to get uncomfortable, but that's the only time it got a little uncomfortable. All right, those are the close-ups, those are the views. Let's put these things to work. Okay, so uh, just before I baton this piece of maple down, I just wanna say, I don't see these knives as something that I would wanna baton on a regular basis. I did this for the testing, and it was batoning that caused the handles to get loose a little bit. I just wanna show that they are capable of it, but it's not my recommendation to baton these knives on a regular basis. One eighth inch thick steel, it is strong enough, but it's just, I don't think it's necessarily a good practice for this style of knife or this size knife. Just the same, I'm gonna baton this log or this piece in half, which is two and a half inches in diameter and about 13, 14 inches in length. And then I'll baton one of the halves with the other knife. So I'm starting it with the BSH-1 Dune. And a knife like this, this thin, will take more effort to get through because the wood just wants to pinch the thinner steel rather than split apart. Pick that back up. Put the knife back in. Pick up where I left off. And that was easy enough, wasn't it? The wood feels pretty good. Okay, kind of twisted, but still pretty good. And again, let's do the same thing with the other knife, the glacier, the smaller of the two knives. Yeah, no effort there at all doing that. Okay, off camera, I'm going to split a few of these down smaller so that I can do some other demonstrations with them, like feather sticking and tent peg mag. And I just realized I went through a knot on the bottom of this one with the smaller of the two knives glaciers, so we better check the edge just to see. Yeah, nothing. No glints, no rolls. Run it down my thumb, nail. Yeah, nothing. All right, yeah, that's that worked out the way I wanted to. Okay, I'll split these off camera and we'll pick up with the next step. All right, next demonstration is turning one of these splits into a tent peg, and the reason being, of course, is that it actually has two different skills that it's nice to demonstrate. One is the ability to create notches with the um, knife and at the same time do some cross baton and across the grain because that's usually a little harder on the knife edge. So that'll be one. And on the other end, we have to put a point. So that will allow me to test the comfort using the knife in a reverse grip using the chest lever to take the material off of the end. So let's just, first we'll start with the dune. And for this, all I really need is a, a little stop cut in to there. My stump is kind of getting used up. And of course, look that. Didn't expect any trouble with that. So there is the notch created. Now let's uh, put a point on the other end using the 
other knife, the Glacier. So just quickly, I'm switching back and forth between the two knives because uh, they are so similar in design in terms of the blade themselves, with the exception, of course, of the Dune being longer than the Glacier, that I expect the performance between the two of them to be pretty much identical, and they have been, of course. I will do feather sticking with both of them just to talk about the comfort in hand, their ability to do feather sticking, because there is, some, of course, some slight differences in the blade that can affect how nice and comfortable it is to do feather sticking. But I chose the Glacier specifically for this task, the putting the point on the end of my tent peg, because I just find it a little bit more comfortable here. It's a bit of a smaller knife, yes, but it's just a little bit more comfortable in reverse grip. So I can see that this has a quite a twist at the end of it, but you know, that's all part of the test. Let's just see how well it does to take material off. And it is everything I expected it to be. Scandi grind bites in and creates a point with very few passes back and forth. All right, that's the tent peg made. Now I'll pick a couple more splits and we'll do some feather sticking. All right, I'm gonna start with the larger of the two knives. I don't think it makes much difference which splits they are. They came right off of the same piece of wood. They have a knot at one end, and but they're clean at the other end, so that's where we'll go. So feather sticking wise, you know, I could do with a bit of a thicker grip through here, but for comfort's sake, but uh, I don't think it, you know, for a few feather sticks, it's not gonna make a lot of difference. Interesting, this wood may not be as Well, it is oak, and oak is not <laughs> my favorite for creating feather sticks on. But it's what I found, it's what I have. Just the same. That edge is running down the wood. It's just not making big curls. See if I can make them a little finer, maybe they'll curl better. Well, they're not really curly. Let me run one out on the edge here and see what happens. All right, so I'm thinking my wood may not have been the best choice, but I'll say that the knife certainly stood up to the task. It did a good job of it. Maybe that this wood is not quite as dry. Try some really fine ones. I'm getting fine curls, but yeah, overall, I don't think this wood is as dry as it could be. Let's just hog that off. Yeah, that came off nice. All right, I have the other knife here, and I have another split from the same piece of wood. See how it does with feather sticks. You wouldn't think that the two knives that similar in design would have that much of a difference. But this knife being a little bit smaller, even though the steel is the same thickness, same steel, same heat treatment, same edge on it, the geometry is the same. The only difference would be the height from the spine to the edge that's different. I'm finding this one a little easier to feather with. Still pretty much the same. So the wood wasn't the best choice, but overall this is just that slight bit nicer to carry and hold in your hand when you're doing feather sticks. Seems to run down the wood very well. All right, the only other test left to do now is scraping. All right, last demonstration is scraping. I have some fat wood, I have my ferrocerium rod, and I have those two splits of wood I just did the feather sticking on. So, of course, they have a big knot on the end. 
But let's see what I can do with it just the same, starting with the dune. Yeah, it's creating lots of fuzz. As was expected, lots of fuzz off of there. Let's use the other knife to do the same thing on the other feather stick. The spines are very, very sharp doing their job. So I have lots of little bits of scrapings. I'm just going to set those aside. Starting with the glacier, let's do a little bit of fat wood. Yep. And the dune. Yep, they both scrape equally well. Put my fat wood in the center. Love that smell. Get my verserum rod out. Yep. And that was that. That's all there is to it. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few more comments for the Beavercraft Dune and the Beavercraft Glacier. So I chose to review both of these knives in the same video because they're so similar to each other. The Dune being a little bit bigger than the Glacier and maybe a few other subtle things like a clip point on the Glacier as well as the rounded pommel where the Dune does not have that clip point and has a more of a prominence on the pommel area. Other than that, they're pretty much identical knives and they perform very much like each other as well. My personal preference, I think I've mentioned this already, between the two knives is the smaller of the two, the Glacier. It's just a little bit more comfortable overall in hand and maybe a little bit more maneuverable because of the shorter blade. Other than that though, you really can't go wrong with either of these knives, especially at the price that they're being sold for. So I just wanna make a comment on the steel because always somebody makes this comment in the comment section for my videos, is that they are made from a high carbon steel 1066. First somebody, thing somebody's gonna say is 1066 is not high carbon. Yes, it is. It is a high carbon stainless steel. It's not 1085, it's not 1095, but it's still a high carbon steel. And we have become so used to having these higher carbon content steels that we think that these lower carbon content steels are of no value. And that's just not the case. They actually have high value. It is not just the carbon content that makes a steel great or bad. In fact, these are still very functional steels, even with the, the slightly lower amount of carbon compared to some of the others you get out there. What it does though, is means it can be brought to a very sharp edge and yes, it is true, they will lose that edge a little faster than some of the other higher carbon content steels. But it's also true that they're much easier to sharpen. So that's something you have to keep in mind. You're buying a bargain basement price knife, but you're getting a high value knife that's very functional with a reasonably good steel on them. It is easy to sharpen, and easy to maintain. Speaking of maintenance, since they are a carbon steel, not a stainless, you do wanna keep them well cleaned, well dried and oiled afterwards before you put them away just to keep any rust from forming on them. I mean, rust isn't the end of the world. We know how to get rid of that with a little bit of auto salt or something. But if you wanna keep them looking good, then by all means, take the time to put into the maintenance of them. You can't beat these knives for the value for dollar. Really, you can't. They're just a good high value knife made in the Ukraine uh, under a family owned business. What more can you say? So we'll leave it at that. All the description of both of these knives will be in the video description, of course. The links to where you can take another look at them and possibly purchase them if you're interested will be there as well. If you have any comments and questions on these knives or anything else from that matter, put it in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.